my name is Abdullah Abu Sheikh. I am the founder of both uh, Rizq and uh, Barqi V. I've started my journey uh, almost 10 years back uh, with uh, my family business and then I moved into Renewable Energy where we built a Renewable Energy Equity Fund uh, between Africa and China. Uh, and then I started moving into uh, VC and tech uh, in 2018-2019, uh, we started with Rizq, which was uh, my first startup, and it was uh, it's mainly a, a marketplace of services meant to bridge the gap between uh, supply and demand of uh, the service space in the region. Uh, Rizq now exists in uh, Saudi, in Egypt, and in the UAE, and uh, uh, we've been for the past year and a half almost building Barq in Stealth, which is the first uh, electric vehicle manufacturer in the, in the region. Uh, we've just launched it with a few weeks ago with Americana and uh, our other partners in the region. I had the, the, the opportunity to start fairly early on and I, that made me more of a sponge and got, you know, managed to attract a lot of things from many different people. Uh, but I think uh, maybe my late father was uh, the most uh, effective or my most uh, uh, concrete uh, side of or source of uh, inspiration. And the main, the main thing he taught me was not anything that has to do with value of money or capital or what people usually think are the ABCs of entrepreneurship. His uh, fundamental thought was that if your capital is within your intellect and if your capital is within your capacity to create, you can always create. But if your dependency is on a source of income or your financial backing or your family name, that is always, you know, uh, that can always go away. So I, I believe in, uh, call it sovereignty, right, of this side of the world. I feel like this, this generations on generations of people in this part of the world were born, uh, maybe lived and died with massive dependency on the West or uh, one or another source of innovation. Uh, maybe the past, you know, three, four generations of this place, we have not seen anything being built here. We've just been importers, consumers, and we've kind of ingrained consumerism into uh, our kids and into our day-to-day -day life. And we've just maybe given in to the fact that, oh, we'll just wait for somebody to build for us. Um, and I believe the pandemic and the current like state of affairs in the world shows people that if you're not sovereign, uh, you are very, very fragile. Uh, it shows people that if you do not have your own sovereignty, be it supply chain sovereignty, be it digital sovereignty, be it whatever kind of dependency on your day-to-day -day usage, uh, if you are dependent on somebody else to provide you with that, then you're probably screwed. And if, if, if we look in the, into the tech space, easily 98% of your everyday tech that you use today is built somewhere else. And all of it comes from the same place, <laughs> to, say, to, to say the least and not to name any names, but 98% of the platforms, uh, of the uh, hardware, software that you're using every day comes from the exact same place. Um, you, with, with the exposure the world has as of late, let that sink in, right? Uh, less than 2% is not US content and less than 2% is local, if you will, right? So that, I, I, don't, I don't find that as a great thing to have. Uh, and it creates a huge, like what are we telling everybody that's coming after us, right? That we were so passive and we've allowed, you know, for somebody else to build everything for us. And at any given moment they can say, oh, we're gonna take it back or we're gonna give it to you and we're gonna decide how much you use it and we're gonna decide what you get to see and what you don't get to see and we're gonna decide how much, how much you get to spend and how much you don't get to spend. I don't like that. So that, that shapes my attitude about uh, building, basically. I don't find myself in a position to give advice because I don't claim to have, you know, figured it all out. But I think there are a few things that, that make me, you know, find my northern star whenever. The, the, the first of all is normalize failure. It is okay to fail. Uh, all of the success that you see in the West is built on two or three hundred years of continuous failure, right? 
uh, and then the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years were the successful part. Uh, here, there is more of an attitude or a taboo around failure. Like people want to succeed, but they never want to fail. Everybody wants to be, you know, on the cover of a magazine and everybody wants to be on Forbes and everybody wants to be, you know, a, a, a star, but nobody wants to make any failures. Uh, that's very counterintuitive to me. So uh, the minute you decide I want to become entrepreneurial or I want to build something or I want to create, uh, failure is the natural course of things. You're going to fail a lot more than you're going to succeed. And you're going to be judged on your ability to deal with failure. The stamina of how much you can take in terms of failure is, is, is really decisive in your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, I, we see it all the time. Uh, people think it's about the intensity of uh, what I want. And uh, like if you go on New Year's Eve or if you go on the 2nd of January to any gym, you'll find that all of the gyms are full because the intensity of people saying uh, New Year, New Me and I want to become uh, healthy and athletic is great. But go a week later, you don't find anybody. This is because the stamina of aspiration, if you want, is much lower than the intensity of aspiration. So if you if you like get this boost of energy and you say, I want to be entrepreneurial and it lasts for a week, you're not, this is not for you. But this is something that does not stop. It's just going to keep going on and on and on and on. And within that journey, you're going to have more downs than ups. And you have to be very well conditioned uh, for that.